conflict nationally within the Republican Party about whether Republicans are going to be big, intrusive government conservatives like they have been mostly, particularly in recent decades, or whether they're going to be small government conservatives, the way some of the libertarian and some of the Tea Party folks purport to want to lead things. It is a fascinating struggle to watch play out on the national stage, but it is an even more fascinating struggle to watch play out in the great state of Wyoming. Yes, Wyoming. This is a story that is not going to go the way you think it is. I can almost guarantee you that. Uh, so first of all, there's something you should know about the state legislature in Wyoming. This is why the struggle in Wyoming can be seen as a sort of point of illumination for the Republican Party. Here's what the seating chart looks like. Look at this. In the state legislature in Wyoming. This is the House and Senate combined. There are 90 legislators in Wyoming. 76 of them are Republicans. This is whatever's about three steps bigger than a supermajority. So think mega majority, almost one party rule here. Uh, and in steps a culture warrior, a big intrusive government state house member by the name of Bob Brechtel. Representative Brechtel introduced a bill apparently called the Abortion Available Information for Decision Bill. And this awkwardly titled bill calls for some fairly extreme restrictions on abortion. It mandates that doctors inform the pregnant woman that she has has a right to view an active ultrasound. It also requires doctors to tell women lots and lots of things, most of which are not supported by the preponderance of medical evidence about fetal pain and when and how and to what degree a fetus feels pain. It requires all that information to be delivered to a woman 24 hours before an abortion. In other words, there's a 24-hour waiting period for an abortion. So big intrusive government bills introduced in the very, very, very Republican legislature in Wyoming. This sort of thing is happening in a lot of states right now. But in Wyoming, there is a conservative rejoinder, an actually conservative rejoinder to this big intrusive government bill. There is a volley from the other side of the Republican Party. As in, hey, you guys, actually we meant that small government thing. And a pair of Republican legislators got up in the east wing of the Wyoming State Capitol building in Cheyenne and they made the case against this guy, this guy from their own party, in terms that would lift the roof off the U.S. Capitol in Washington if any self-proclaimed conservative did it there. Uh, we do not think this has been broadcast uh, nationally, as far as we know. Uh, we think this is something of a Rachel Maddow show exclusive. Uh, so listen to this. This happened uh, recently. This happened late last month in the state house in Wyoming. Here is a Republican argument against a Republican anti-abortion measure. Listen. When I go to the doctor, it is the most private thing you can imagine. I want myself, I want my husband, and I want my doctor there. And I don't want any government. What this bill does is say that as a woman that I'm not smart enough to know the decision that I'm making. That somehow the state is required in this particular decision where they are required in no other medical decision. The doctors don't need to be told by us when we don't even know what the heck we're talking about. We don't even know what's in the statutes. All I'm asking is we keep government where it should be, and that's out of the doctor's office. Keep government where it should be, out of the doctor's office. What you just heard were Republican lawmakers making conservative Republican arguments against the tightening of abortion rights. The tightening of abortion rights has been spreading across the country, state legislature by state legislature. One of those lawmakers you just heard, State Representative Sue Wallace, went on to tell a deeply personal story about her own decision to have an abortion years ago. As she explained to her colleagues on the floor of the Wyoming House, she had had a brush with cancer, which had already complicated previous pregnancies and caused her to miscarry once. She was a single mom separated from an abusive partner at the time when she made the very difficult choice to have an abortion. She told all of that to the Wyoming House of Representatives. And then she said this. And the thing I want to make sure you understand is that's just one story. There's a zillion variations out there. And we as a state should not be interfering with those very personal, very private, very, um, that our ability as free um, moral agents cannot 
justify um, these these broad strokes. So should this go forward, I would hope to amend it by taking out all of those things that are not true and un. Uh, are, are misleading, which there are many in this bill. I know that some of you, may, maybe many of you, feel like you have to vote one way or another on this bill to make some broad statement. But I just ask you, as a human being, as a friend, and as a colleague, not to pass mass judgment. on your fellow human beings. That was January 25th. That bill, that anti-abortion bill she was arguing against, uh, was defeated. But the fight is not over. Far from it, because the original bill sponsor, remember him, Bob Brechtel, he's introduced another one. It's called the Abortion Ultrasound Information Bill, very similar to the old bill, the one that just got killed, except he took out all the super scientifically dubious stuff about fetal pain. Uh, the new bill, which is again, functionally very similar, is inching toward passage. But as promised, Representative Sue Wallace is offering amendments, trying to change it as much as she can, trying to make it less intrusive, making a small C Republican, small see conservative Republican argument against a big government Republican proposal in the culture war. We will keep you posted on her battle against this bill and this most fascinating battle within the Republican Party.